Right now, Brian Cashman is going to join us. He's the guy, uh, he and his staff, who put the, this team together. Brian, it's Michael and Don. How are you doing today? Um, tired and didn't really sleep very well last night. It's been a, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, we wanted to go, we wanted to be in meetings in Kansas City, uh, you know, obviously going through advanced gathering reports as well as picking the, 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 the next round. But uh, instead, I'm talking to you guys. Well, Brian, I guess there are several questions, and we'll try to hit you with as many as we can. Did this team get old all of a sudden? Because you have an older team, and did the length of the schedule get them? Or was the offensive backpedal due to Teixeira's injury? Well, I think Teixeira's injury definitely hurt. Um, you know, he was one of our big guys. You know, first he was having an MVP you know, uh, type of year, so he was going to get significant MVP votes uh, the way he was going. And... Um, and he was also one of our bangers against left-handed pitching. I mean, he was one of our definite in the middle of the lineup guys that uh, that would feast on left-handers. So losing him was tough. Uh, thankfully, we had Bird that uh, to cushion that blow in a, in a real positive way. Uh, you know, what Bird did was very special, and uh, and you know the ceiling and the excitement as as we move forward with his future is you know is is great. But uh, but. Despite you know what Bird did, he's still not Mark Teixeira, and uh, and so that was uh, you know something that we missed. But I, I can't say it was. Uh, I think you talked about old uh, or older. You know, Ellsbury's 32, um, Gardner's 32, and, and that's not old. And yet they both struggled mightily. Beltron's 38, and he, he you know he was you know thriving. Um, you know, so you know uh, Headley's 31, and he was struggling in the end. Uh, and uh, you know, and and Brian McCann's 31, and he was struggling in the end. You know, so we had you know and Alex Rodriguez obviously, um, mm-hmm. you know, also also struggled. The guys that didn't struggle really were down the down the stretch were Beltron, Dede, and Bird, and then we were getting some uh, you know offensive reps from from Ackley and uh, and. Brett Snyder and the platoon scenario that kind of developed here in the last 20 days of September. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, the injury to Tex and then, uh, you know, the slumps that uh, then, you know, took place in the last two months, you know, sunk our offense. You know, the big topic of conversation yesterday, Brian, was, you know, here's Ellsbury in the second year of a seven-year contract, and he's not playing in your biggest game of the season. Uh, is that somewhat of an admission that maybe that contract was a mistake? No, I think it has, it has more to do with uh, we have both Ellsbury and uh, Ellsbury, who was you know before the knee injury up through June, was having a tremendous year, and uh, and had a good year last year too. And then uh, this year, once he tweaked the knee, uh, you know he did not come back the same for whatever reason. Even though uh, you know uh, we believe he's healthy, and uh, and Gardner also in this you know, went in the tank in the second half too. So um, we had to sit one of these two guys uh, against Dallas Keuchel. Uh, and to get Chris Young's bat in the lineup, and that was it. You know, Beltran was uh, swinging the bat well, and so one of those two guys were going to have to sit. That had more to do with Dallas Keuchel than uh, than than anything else. So I, it has nothing to do with his contract, or or being worried about his contract going forward. He has had a bad year, uh, without a doubt for him, and uh, and we've experienced that. Like Mark Teixeira just came back this year at 35, and you know, and he was coming through some injuries. Uh, but showed as he moved forward that he's still that type of player. We had Alex Rodriguez at age 40 uh, just come back and have a year that no one would have expected. And so Ells has had a bat down year, uh, no doubt. He's our best athlete, and there's no reason to believe he won't be the same player that we expect him to be. Unfortunately, he wasn't that player along with a lot of our guys, which include Gardner, Headley, you know, McCann. You know, as much as I love them and they were battling and they're fighting through, you know, uh, the, the, the aches and pains of, of a long season because we ran them out there. On a daily basis, um, I, you know, clearly I think the fatigue set in in some cases, that or slumps or what have you, and uh, and and we just weren't able to squeak uh, squeak enough runs out of that lineup in the end. Uh, let me throw this at you, Brian, and, and I hope that you realize it's coming from somebody who is a fan of Girardi, who defends Girardi on this show. I just felt that the last month of the season, he managed completely differently than I've ever seen him manage. He managed like. Every single game was the seventh game of the World Series. I thought he went to the bullpen way too much, changed pitchers way too much, and I just think he rested people way too much in games that you had to win. Did you notice a change in the manager over the last month of the season? Well, I think uh, I wouldn't say I noticed a change. I think what you're referring to is someone who identified, you know, a team that was struggling, and he was continuing to find, trying to find different ways to 
to uh, you know plug a hole. You know, is it fatigue? So then let's try to rest guys. Uh, all right, well that didn't work. So let's. Uh, I'm going to keep running those guys out there then. Uh, and and you know we need to win games. We need to hold on. Uh, in some situations, you know, I think you could always tell the talk point to areas where managers might, you know, uh, you know go to a guy in the pen too much. I mean, we just saw the Texas Rangers who wound up winning the American League West. Uh, they they pitched their closer five days in a row. Right. And so this stuff is going on everywhere. When you get to September too, the rosters are expanded, which creates more choices with uh, uh, a lot more, you know, uh, circumstances to play out. And so I just say it's not easy managing all the uh, the roster, the personalities, the the injuries that people might not be aware of. Uh, trying to, you know, you know, uh, you know, the manager gets, you know, good advice every now and then, clearly from trainers saying, hey, or the front office, you're going to need to back off on this guy. You got to rest this guy. His hammy's barking. Doesn't mean he has a pulled hammy, but you know. And so, a lot of this stuff doesn't creep into the public arena. Uh, but those are the type of situations that he has to deal with. Um, and uh, and so, I, I think it was more reflective of you know, if this you know, of a team that was really struggling, and he was just trying to find what the right elixir was to solve the problem.